top of the morning to you. Oh, it's kind of a blustery, chilly day here. A little blast of uh, fall weather. It's coming to get me. I bought a little solder iron maintenance today. I got a, uh, this is a uh, American Beauty solder iron. Let's see if we can see that there. Yep, right there. This is a hundred water. And uh, I'm gonna, a friend bought by a whole five gallon bucket of these. I like a lot of my compadres. Usually it's, you can have all these if you make one good working one for me. Pfft, that's a no-brainer. If I had a penny for every time I fixed a soldering iron, or a tinned one, I'd be a very rich man. FYI, that tip is just held in with, uh, it's warming up here, that tip is held in with the old set screw, and if you're going to take that out, make sure you get a really good fitting set screw. And you may want to soak it in some uh, penetrating oil first. Sometimes if you if you plug these in and let them cool off and then work on them a little bit, you know, try and break it loose, try and tighten it, and then release it back and forth a little bit, they eventually break loose. The other thing you're going to need is some solder. Um, you either use straight, just straight solder, or solder with uh, rosin core in it. Don't use the acid core solder to do this. This is uh, called tinning, hence tinning your tip is what the title is. I've also got some rosin core uh, solder here with uh, in this little handy dandy jar, plastic, uh, metal jar. What you're going to do is put a, a thin coat of solder on the tip. It'll help uh, with heat transfer and it'll help with um, keeping the tip from being damaged by the heat. Uh, some of these soldering irons, are, this is a hunter water, that's a pretty good size soldering iron. And uh, that slowly boils that uh, material and gradually destroys the tip. Well, if you keep the tip tinned, uh, you won't have so much trouble. And you'll have a lot better time when it comes to soldering stuff, it'll want to stick a little better. The other thing you're going to need too is a little paper towel. One of the things you can do is take your soldering paste and kind of coat the tip a little bit. You don't have to cover the whole tip. You can cover, you know, just down a little bit. I usually try and come down a little bit past the point or the pyramid. And FYI, this is a, like I said, this is American Beauty. This is a Hunter Water. And that tip part number is um, a 3738. I'm pretty sure that that's the part number. And you may be able to still get these. I'm pretty sure American Beauty is still in business. They've been in business a long time. This one has a kind of a cloth cord on it, but it's still in good shape. Um, if you get a hold of one of these, one of the things you can do is you can replace these cords. All you do is unscrew that base right below the, uh, the heat shield. That just unscrews. And this handle is actually wood, but it's got a really good coat of paint on it. And underneath here is a little terminal board with two set screw or two nah, they're like pan head screws you can get a pretty decent line cord or use an old extension cord and chop the end off that's what I do uh, especially if I'm building a new one for myself these cords are never long enough in my opinion I go buy a uh, like a 10 foot two wire extension cord and that'll fit in there just right make sure it's reasonably heavy though um, you know if you can find a heavy duty one uh, that's a pretty good deal like I said, those irons are 100 watt. It's starting to heat up. Let me, I'm just pushing that in there to get a little bit on the end. And I'm going to get my solder ready. This really doesn't take too long. You just kind of start rubbing it on there as it gets heated up. It's just a really cold, blustery day today. You would do this on soldering guns too, but you're going to use the heat from the electric soldering gun or any you know, any soldering iron or soldering gun, this tinning thing is a, a pretty standard procedure. What I did first was I took and used my belt sander to sh reshape the tip a little bit. It was kind of there. It's, I don't know if you can see that. It's starting to, uh, it's, uh, I 
starting to right there it's starting to melt the solder you just kind of keep smearing that around on there the rosin in the solder will help you uh, get the solder on the tip you just smear that on there it'll gradually heat up as it gets hotter and hotter and hotter Take the towel and just gradually wipe that off. And you can come down the soldering iron a little ways. Just, uh, I usually just draw a line on there with the solder. Careful down here, it does get pretty warm. And you just keep rubbing it on there. You can come down as far as you want, although there's really no reason to come too far down. That uh, flux keeps that cleaned up. This one actually needs a little bit more work. There are a couple little spots on there that I didn't get cleaned up. But you can see it's pretty cleaned up. You can go ahead and recoat that whole thing after you wipe it off. The extra solder won't hurt anything. If anything, it'll it'll get into the places and pores. Another uh, pretty good thing to use. I use uh, l really light steel wool sometimes to kind of knock the dirt and stuff off those. That's all there is to it. And then every so often you'll, like I said, you wipe that off and then retin it. Um, try not to let your soldering iron sit and bake for extended periods of time. You can do one to two, well, you can do three things. You can unplug it. It really doesn't take that long. It's not that big an inconvenience. Um, one of the things I do too on the bench is uh, I actually use a, an old tin or pie pan or something to actually set the soldering iron on, or you actually you're better off setting it in. Um, you can use metal plates. You can, they do make soldering stands. But if you can't afford one or can't find one, this works just as good. It's so big it's going to wick away any of the heat. Keep you from burning your bench. Be real careful with these things. Some of these are pretty good size. And they can really cause some serious havoc if you uh, get them uh, unattended and they get up against something. If you, the other thing you can do is, besides unplugging your soldering iron, um, one of my other videos is you can make the, what they call a standby switch. You can, I'll put a link to that video down underneath here. It really is just a switch and a, and a rectifier diode and a work bo electrical work box. All it does is convert um, AC into kind of half wave DC. It derates the soldering iron a little bit so when you're done using it you can flick the switch, put it in standby. It'll, it'll cool it down but it won't turn it completely off and one of the other things you could do too is if you have a heavy duty variac you could turn it down I've done that before too it's easier just to un unplug them or use the standby switch especially on those bigger soldering irons they really generate a lot of heat they can really uh, since it's so concentrated it can really wreak havoc on the thing all the all this pitting I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah, on the edge there. There's a lot of rust and pitting there. A lot of that is from uh, the corrosive action of uh, acid core solder. You can use acid core solder with your soldering iron. I don't recommend it. Um, but you can do it. If you do that, um, make sure you wipe that off after you're done uh, really good and uh, try and neutralize the solder. Uh, there may be a little residual acid or the fumes may be floating around there. The other reason that that gets so screwed up is a lot of people store the soldering iron in a nice little box and they store acid core solder in the box with it. Well, that acid kind of vaporizes and ekes out. If you're going to do that, at least take the, t take the end of the solder and uh, kink it over and smash it flat. 
that'll seal it in. What I do nowadays is I just put the solder in a different area, or actually, to really be safe, I just put it in a small Tupperware box, a little lunch, plastic lunch sandwich box, or a plastic bag, anything to seal it up. Um, that acid is quite active, and it, it'll, you know, if you put it in the wrong place, it'll screw stuff up. I hate to tell you how many soldering kits I've had that had nice metal cases, and you open them up, and the insides of them are just a train wreck from corrosion from the acid core solder. So, treat it like the uh, like the little nasty enemy it is. It's a corrosive agent. Put it in a plastic bag. Like I said, that, that works really good for uh, old Tupperware containers. Glass jar, I don't care for it, but it'd be better than nothing. My, my bitch about glass jars is, is if, if you drop them, they break and go everywhere. Um, so there you go. That's all there is to it. Uh, you're tinned and ready to go. Just repeat that process every so often. You know, as the tip gets damaged, you can uh, use a you know, sandpaper or, a, uh, like I said, I use a belt sander. It works great. Just lightly touch it up. Or uh, you can use a file, a very fine file. You're going to have to card it and clean it out. You'll get that in there. Uh, it's a lot easier to keep up the maintenance on your soldering iron. It's a lot easier to keep up the maintenance on a lot of things than it is to go back and straighten it out. So there you go. My partner in crime has a shiny new soldering iron. I got a whole bucket of broken ones to play with, which is just fine with me. That stuff's always fun to tinker with. It's, uh, it's amazing something like this has lasted this long. I bet that's easily 50 years old. No uh, built-in obsolescence there. We should make more products like that. Anyway, if you have a question or a comment, feel free to leave them. It doesn't cost anything. I'll try and get to them. Um, if somebody else gets to your question or comment, answers it for me. That doesn't hurt my feelings. I'm not going to cry. Um, be great if you'd like to subscribe to my channel or sign up whatever they call it um, we have other there are some other soldering videos um, there's some other things on there about soldering irons and different solder stuff but that's not the only thing we deal with here we being me myself and I <laughs> I have a mechanical electromechanical you know construction things. I have a kind of a gamut of things I fiddle with day to day and more and more I've been making videos of them to help people. Anyway, hope it's dry where you're at. It's nice and gloomy and windy and cold and just downright nasty here. It's almost like it's winter. Have a groovy day. Take it easy.